Hello everyone and welcome back to the CDL Podcast channel. As you can see by the screen, per usual, uh, we are doing our prediction episode for the first uh, home series of Stage 3. Really excited to get into this one because obviously there have been a lot of roster changes. It's actually been a recent game change. Um, I don't know if they're going to play on that patch or not, but uh, we'll see. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot of recent roster changes, so really excited to get into this one. Um, but before we get into that, uh, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It um, really helps grow the channel. Uh, and I really especially love, I always say, when you guys get those comments down below, it's interesting to hear, like, I may be really high on one team, and you might just think that team's trash. And with the way this year is, who knows which one of us is right, because teams are so up and down, and things are so unpredictable. Uh, so I love hearing what you guys think. Uh, or maybe I have a thought on a roster, and you see it in a completely different way, and let's, I mean, I'm obviously not 100% right all the time. Um, so maybe you're going to offer a different insight to a roster that I'm like, hey, you know what? He's right. Uh, and, I mean, I just love having those kind of discussions with you guys, so... Be sure to drop a comment um, down below on your thoughts about some of these roster changes and your predictions for the upcoming week. Um, and before I really get into the predictions, I would like to quick touch on some of the rosters and game news uh, because that could change the outcome of what my picks might have been with old rosters and stuff. Um, so we'll just quickly touch on the ones that weren't really like around or rumored when I did my last pod reacting to the Stage 2 Major. Um, kind of just going to go through the teams from the up and down. Obviously, Dallas and Mega Chains, Paris, uh, they put in temp. I believe we talked about that. In the previous pod, though, that's an interesting move. I'm thinking it'll make them better, and I really hope it does because I kind of like Paris a lot uh, this year. I don't know. I just like the players in the team. Uh, and then Florida, they make a roster change. They bring in Havoc for Slacked. An interesting move because obviously Havoc has a history with these players, so that'll probably help them um, like gel quicker than they would maybe with a new pickup because he's played with all these players uh, besides Neptune, I suppose. Um, but I would say that I think Havoc's slaying potential is probably higher than Slacked. Um, in terms of game knowledge and IGL ability, I feel like it's probably less. Um, I don't know if this move is going to make them better. Maybe just like a honeymoon period and just getting a new face in there will just make them better. But I feel like Slacked was a guy that could organize a lot of the team. Um, but at the same time, this team seemed to struggle with structure and organization. So I don't really know. I feel like Florida is one of the teams I'm somewhat excited because it's a new roster. I always like to watch a new roster play. Um, so I'm excited, but I'm a little bit, I, I don't know if this is like a home run hit. It might make them better, but I don't know if it makes them a top team. Um, like you're obviously trying to do when you make a roster change. Um, and then going to the other teams, Steve stays the same. Uh, Surge stays the same. Uh, Optic obviously stays the same. London brings in Zaptius uh, for Dylan. Interesting move. Uh, kind of sad, honestly. I mean, I, I do believe Dylan probably needed to be benched. I mean, he's been struggling really all of MW mostly and pretty much all of this year, except for a couple series here and there. Uh, it's just sad to say because like when Dylan really burst out onto the scene in BO4, I mean there were times in Black Ops 4 that you could argue he was the best submachine gun in the game, the best SOG player in the game, uh, and he was doing it with his team wasn't really all that great. He was kind of hard carrying them solely um, through some series, and like he was an awesome player. Uh, and then coming into MW, he struggled, and BO4 uh, or not BO4, um, Cold War. Now he struggled a lot. Um, and, like, I heard Zuma talking on the flank, like, he wishes he could work with him, help him, like, get his pacing to a good place, because, like, he's making the game so much harder, and that's, like, that's one of the best just ways I have I can think of to describe Dylan's game. He makes the game so much harder on himself, like, he is such a talented player. I still believe he has all talents in the world to be a great sub uh, in the CDL at some point. It's just, like, he needs somebody to help him with his pacing. He just plays so fast sometimes, and it's, like, when he's got players like Shawnee who are a little slower, and, I mean, Paul now is a little slower, it's, like... He's, he's got more methodical players in his team. He's just so out ahead of them that it's just like he's like trying to take everybody on in one-on-one -on -one fights. And like he's just making the game so much harder on himself. People are just constantly team shooting while he's trying to 1v1 him and stuff. Um, and it's it's just not. I mean, his play style, if he gets the exact right team, it might work. But And it works better in 5v5 when you can have somebody trying to make those crazy routes and stuff. But I don't know. He's just... It's, it's a tough situation. I really hope he bounces back, but I think the move is warranted. And I'm excited to see, because now that team has half of that old Western team that was dominating challengers early in the year. So I'm excited to see how Zap looks um, with Paul X. And I'm really hoping the team can improve because they're like one of the bottom two teams along with LAG right now. So if they can make a big improvement, that would make the league even more interesting. If all of a sudden the 11th team is also a contender to beat anybody. But I hope they improve. I'm not sure how much they will, though. Uh, I think they'll certainly improve a little bit. I don't know if it'll be enough to make them like a top team though, or like even a middle pack team. Uh, and then LAG, I don't think they've technically announced. I mean, at the point where I hit start recording for this video, they hadn't, I mean, I guess they could mid video or something because um, the stage starts tomorrow. So we kind of need to know what their roster is, uh, although I don't play till Saturday. But LAG apparently hasn't been scrimming with Vivid. And I was pissed about this. I was mind blown. I'm, honestly, though, if I'm vivid, I don't know if I'm that upset. I don't have to keep lowering my stock by just getting destroyed and losing all the time because this team sucks. Um, 
and I proved like if I'm vivid, I proved that I'm a good player this year. So maybe I can just not play with this crappy team and lower my stock and have bad stats because I'm playing with a terrible team, uh, and I can just get picked up next year by a better one. Um, but if they're actually like their solution is, hey, let's bench vivid, um, and like we'll pick up somebody else. I I don't understand. I heard that they're probably picking up somebody from their challengers team, which. It can't be Chino if they're benching Vivid because Chino is more of a main or at the very least like a flex, so he's not going to take the place of Vivid on the sub. It could be like Exceed, I guess, um, or maybe like Nero Poison, I think his name is. He's, there's subs, but I don't know that they're any better than Vivid because Vivid's a pretty good player, uh, especially in Search. I don't I don't understand that at all. Um, I did see a funny tweet. I don't remember who it was. It was like a bunch of people talking about it. They were saying like the LAG, I think it was Pac-Man actually. He's like the LAG owner must have a lot of pull in the league because the patch that just came out basically made the game feel like World War II since there's no slide canceling. And now um, you've got the three world champions and they dropped their other teammate. They're going to pick up Aches and they got World War II all over again. I thought it was pretty funny. But, I mean, LAG, they're just chalked. If they're actually benching Vivid and keeping that core three, I mean, when are you going to learn the core three isn't working? You won one tournament together uh, and haven't really done anything since. Uh, and it just, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. You're clearly the 12th worst team in the league or you're the worst team in the league. I don't understand. Um, doesn't the lo I mean, the logic between the only thing, the only way I can think that this makes sense is if there's just an extreme falling out and vivid, just like talk to ownership and just berated them and they have a terrible relationship and they're like, you know, we can't deal with this player. He has a bad relationship. That's like the only way I can think of like logically why they would have benched him. They can't because of his play. There's just no, it has to be some kind of like relationship issue or something, but LAG, they're just chalk. I don't know what they're doing. I don't even know who their fourth is now. Um, obviously rocker stays the same. Surge is staying the same uh phase is same subliners uh they switch in hydra for i believe it's diamond con now at first it sounded like it was mac um they're supposed to pick up sib people were saying but then i heard zuma say that that was never even a thing somehow that rumors got brought up um but they bring in hydra and i've watched a little bit of like hydra's pov and scrims that dude is talented i think i've never been more excited to watch a player um play in his debut or just like his CDL debut. I've never been more excited to watch a player in a long time. I'm so excited to watch him. It's kind of unfortunate we have to wait all the way till Sunday uh, to see his match. And it's against FaZe, so he just gets thrown into the gauntlet right away. Um, but I am so excited to watch Hydra play. I think this kid has some of the most talent uh, we've ever seen. And I kind of like that he's not an NA player because like every time these super talented players like Simp, BZ, all of those like new young guns, Standy, all of them, every time they come up and they're supposed to be like the next great thing, they're all from NA. And like, obviously I'm from America and I love when like the NA players do good, but I also love when like the EU players and stuff do good. And especially because he's not from the UK, I be I'm pretty sure at least I thought he was from France unless I'm stupid, um, but I'm pretty sure he's from France. So that's like, that's just really cool to see like a guy from not, the UK, I mean, even though if it was a UK player, I think it'd be cool too, but it's kind of cool to see somebody from France because you never hear of like a top player. Like the best player I know from France, I mean, it's way back in the day, like Gotaga or like recently, like Brezzi has been pretty good. Um, I believe like Whalers, I think is from France too. And he was pretty good in like BO4. Um, but it's like really cool to see somebody like Hydra, like if he could become like the next superstar of the CDL to be a French player, that'd be awesome. Um, so I'm really excited to watch New York. I believe that's pretty much it for roster changes. The other thing was um, the game got an update and basically slide canceling is like gone. I think like the Krig got a headshot buff. The range got nerfed. Um, but overall, like slide canceling is like gone. So it'll be interesting to see how that changes um, how that changes things for players because slide canceling seems to pretty much be nerfed. So like players are going to have to play a lot. Like you can't just like slide cancel a corner and go for the gunfight. You actually got to play like more methodical. I'm interested to see how that might affect certain players. Um but we'll see. I think without further ado, I think I'd like to just get right into the predictions. We talked about eight, nine minutes about the roster changes, but we had to address some and then the game change. Um, I don't even know if they're going to play on that patch, so I'm going to kind of take the whole slide canceling thing out as much um, as I can out of my mind because um, I don't think that they'll... I don't know. I think that they'll probably play on that patch. I don't know if it'll affect things that much uh, until people really start to get the movement down, so I'm not going to like factor it to like be my decision to win any series i think but i think it can play a factor this weekend for certain players they might be so used to doing that movement that it might hurt them i feel like it benefits like guys like skump uh because if you ever noticed like in the whole slide cancel era i swear skump never slide cancels and he still plays pretty well like it's back to the older way that he's more used to and like a lot of these newer subs are used to slide canceling so that's like the one guy that stuck out in my head that it might benefit um maybe even guys like apathy who aren't really used to the whole slide cancel movement either and were always gunning in games before it and stuff like bo3 when apathy was gunning there wasn't really a slide cancel i don't know we'll see i'm not going to take that too much into factor until we actually see a whole weekend of it so it might screw my predictions up but we'll see um predictions are gonna be hard this week man just looking at this first day we've got paris legion versus dallas empire i mean clearly dallas is 
generally the better team and stuff, but we got Paris who could be in a honeymoon phase. And then on the bottom, you got ultra mutineers. I mean, ultra coming off a win. They look amazing, but Florida could be in the honeymoon stage too. It's like, we have so many honeymoon stage teams that it's going to be tough. Uh, it's always tough to pick against teams in that situation. Um, but empire Paris Legion, I think from what I heard, Paris' scrims weren't going all that great. I thought, I think Paris is going to be a very good team with this roster. However, I do think empire gets the best of them. I think I'll give Paris a map. Um, Empire struggled so much in search. I could see Paris. I mean, Paris has been a good respawn team this year too, though. So, I mean, I think Paris finds a way to take at least a map. Wouldn't be shocked if they take two. I'd be pretty surprised if they won, but I'm, I'm not going to rule out that Paris. This isn't like uh, an Empire LAG match where I wouldn't give them a chance. Like, I'm, I think Paris has a chance to win this match, but I'm only going to give them one map. I think they'll be all close maps. So I think like the hard point will be within like 20, probably either way. I think the search will go down to like around 10, at least maybe maybe around nine, maybe like a six three or something. 6-4. Uh, I think a control would go down to the last round. I think then the game for hardpoint would be close. I think it'll all be close maps. I do think Paris has a chance to maybe sneak out two maps, um, but that's probably the most I'd give them. I, I think it's unlikely they win it. Um, then the next match of that day, it's Toronto versus Florida. Very tough to pick against Toronto, obviously, because they're coming off winning an event. Um, but I also feel like everybody's going to pick Toronto to win both their matches this week, and they kind of have trap matches because Florida is not a bad team. They can beat anybody on the right day, and then later in the week, they have Empire. Toronto plays Empire. Empire obviously can beat anybody on any given day too, so it's really tough, but I think I'm going to go Toronto. I actually think this one is going to go the distance though because I don't think I think Toronto might come out um, just feeling a little confident, and then Florida is like, well, we got nothing to lose. We're playing the champs. Let's, let's, let's do this thing with a new roster, honeymoon period. I think Florida's going to come out hot. Uh, Florida has like no five game series, but I think with Havoc, maybe that'll change. It'll be a little better. Uh, and they'll lose this one three to two. And then going on to Friday, we've got LA Thieves versus Seattle Surge. This is a tough one. Um, oh yeah. I want to touch quickly on the groups. Actually take a little pause here. Um, I'm going to pull up the groups on like a side tab here uh, and just look at, um, what was it? Uh, I wanted to see the groups because I remember in my last video, I saw, uh, I said like one of my predictions um one of my predictions was like surge or like one of my hot takes is like surge will end up top three in their group uh and they got absolutely screwed because like group a is toronto dallas minnesota florida legion gorillas i feel like that one i mean it's a tough group there's tough teams but i feel like the top three and that's pretty clear like unless some crazy stuff happened you would expect ultra empire and rocker to finish in the top three in whatever order um and then mutineers legion and gorillas would probably finish in the bottom three in i mean i figure that probably mutineers and legion would be four or five and then gorillas will be last but it's it'd be pretty unlikely that empire ultra and rocker aren't top three but then group b you've got phase optic um thieves subliner surge and raven so when you look at that you figure phase optic and um subliners are probably locks to get top three but then surge are also a team that could potentially get top three also la thieves is a team that could potentially get top three and london with a new roster i don't know if they have the potential to get top three but they're going to be more competitive i think than they would have been so that group b is the group of death um it's going to be crazy because honestly you've got probably ultra empire and rocker and the other group are some are all top six teams and the other side you got phase optic and subliners who are probably the other three teams in the top six but if you want to make arguments for any other teams that could be in there it's probably thieves and surge who are both in group b so i mean Group B is nuts. It's unfortunate for Surge. I just thought of that because I saw them here um, playing LA Thieves in this next match. And this is a tough one to predict for me because they feel like very opposite teams. I feel like Surge are one of the more slow teams in the league. They play the game more methodically. They break it down um, and they have great strategy to them. And Thieves has the four sub machine gun players. And I feel like they're a faster team. They just want to fly. So it's kind of a clash of the styles here. I've always been more of the fast paced person, but you know, I've had a lot of faith in the Seattle Surge recently. And I'm going to pick them to win this. And I think this one's going to go the distance. I think it's going to go 3-2. I have a tough time picking against Thieves in a Game 5 because this year especially, TJ seems to be Mr. Game 5. He seems to go off in a lot of Game 5s. Um, this is a toss-up match to me. I'm picking Surge just because I've kind of been riding the Surge wave. I kind of kind of like them as a team. They're kind of one of my, like, I don't know. I don't really have, like, a favorite team. I just love watching the CDL. I have players I really like. But for some reason, like, this year Surge and, like, Paris, obviously, uh, like they're just becoming like teams that I really like to root for. I just really like to root for the surge. I want to see them do well. So that's honestly, it's probably a little personal bias coming in since I think this match is a toss up. Um, obviously since I'm saying it's a toss up, if LA thieves win this, it wouldn't shock me in the slightest, but I'm just going to go surge three, two, cause I just feel like they have a little more chemistry as a team. They're not as new. The honeymoon period for LA thieves might be a little bit over. And I think surge have a chance to win it three, two. No idea though. This could, this is a toss up one. This is one that I just need to watch and enjoy. I'm really excited for that one. Uh, the second match is Optic versus London. 
I'm pretty sure this is the first time Optic in London have played this year. I thought I saw that on Twitter or something. I'm pretty sure. Um, if it's not, it's like the second time they played because they haven't played much. But I'm pretty sure it is their first matchup of the year. I think it's a relatively easy one. I think Optic's going to win this one 3-1. to one. Um, Looking at their matches, Optic gets a nice start to the week uh, or to the stage because they have probably the two easiest teams in their group. I mean, they have Surge, who's a good team. Between Surge and Thieves, they're kind of on the same level, but they don't have to play Phase or Subliners. Um, we're both in their group and are obviously great teams. So that's kind of a break for Optic. Uh, I do think that London has more upset potential than I normally would uh, over Optic here because, once again, Honeymoon period is in effect for them. Uh, they have Zap coming in for Dylan. So I do think London has a decent chance to win this, although I think Optic is pissed coming off that last tournament. They obviously know that they should have won their match against Minnesota, and who knows what they would have done after that. Uh, and I think Optic's going to start to pick it up. It seems like that kind of that time of year that Optic hasn't won an event yet. Like it's time to pick it up. Uh, I think they will. I think that they understand that this week they have to go two and zero because I do believe they have to go two and zero because there's a realistic chance they lose to Thieves, Phase, and Subliners later. So I believe they know they need to go two and zero this week, and I think they'll start out with a win over London. Um, Going into Saturday, uh, an interesting one, Battle of the Honeymoon Periods, maybe, if LA Gorillas is making a roster change. This one's really hard to predict, um, simply for the fact that we don't even know what LAG's roster is. Maybe the Vivid thing's wrong. Maybe they actually dropped Assault um, for Chino off their academy team or something. Uh, I think that would make them better, because I think Chino's better than Assault. Um, but I think that, I don't know, this is just a weird one to predict. I'm going with Paris, uh, and I think I'm just going to go 3-0. Uh, I don't really know why I'm going 3-0. I always say I have to pick some 3-0s because they're bound to happen. I bet you each day is going to have a 3-0, uh, and I'm going to be wrong in terms of map count, but I'm going to pick Paris because we don't even know what LAG's roster is, and I don't even want to ever pick them when I know what their roster is. So I don't know how I could want to pick them when I don't know. Um, and I do think Paris is going to be a good team with Temp. I think they're going to get better, uh, and I think they're already better than LAG, so I don't see a way they get worse unless LAG picks up an absolute stud of a superstar from Challengers that I just don't know about. Um, I think Paris wins at 3-0. Uh, the next one is another freaking hard one to predict because Minnesota, great team. They look so good. Um, honeymoon period with Stanley for them is probably over. And then the other side, you got Florida, who I think is a really good team but got a tough draw this week because they had to play Ultra and Rocker, arguably the top two teams in their group. Um, uh, it's hard to pick against Minnesota. I, I think I'm going to go with them, uh, and I'm going to go 3-1. I do think this is a trap match, like big time trap match though, because, uh, Florida has always been one of those teams that even when they weren't playing that well with Slacked, like when you saw them matching up against like Optic or against Dallas or FaZe or Subliners, any of those top teams, like you always felt like, yeah, those top teams are going to win, but like Florida has a chance to sneak out a win. Like when you've got Big Wake on your team and you've got Skies and Neptune and now Havoc, like Big Wake is one of the best flexes in the league. Skies is one of the most talented ARs. Like Neptune can just go off on any given map. And now Havoc is another style player that can go off on any given map. So it's like you feel like they have upset potential, especially now with Havoc over like anyone. So like I could see them beating Rocker because I'm not as high on Rocker as a lot of people are. Like I feel like they should have, I mean, they lost their first match to Dallas because they choked. And then they should have lost to Optic, but got a crazy a crazy 1v3 for Lamar uh, accuracy in round 11. And then they lost 3-1 to Ultra. Like, they didn't have a great showing this weekend. They should have won 0-2 and, and went out of the tournament right away. Like, people are like, seem to, like, want to crown Minnesota, like, the best team or a top team. I do think they're very good. They're definitely top six. I'm just, I don't know. I have a little questions about them. I am going to pick them to win this because, like I said, I, do, I still think they're a better team than Florida in top six. But I would not be surprised at a Florida upset here. Final match of Saturday, uh, it's the murky match, double points, Optic versus Surge. Um, you know I love my Surge. I want to pick them very bad, but if anything has been an indication this year, uh, if there's one team that Optic is beating consistently, it is the Surge. Uh, I think in that one group stage match um, in uh, stage two, they beat them 3-0 like, pretty easily um, coming off their bad week when Optic went 0-2. The next week, they just bop Surge off the stage. Uh, and then in the major, I'm pretty sure they beat them 3-1 uh, decently handily. Uh, so I do think I'm going to go Optic 3-1 again here. Uh, I'm going to think Surge has improved since they got 3-0'd, since they got 3-1 last time. I'll give them a map. I think that they'll probably take, I'd say they probably take either map 1 or map 2, uh, and then Optic will rattle off either 3 straight or uh, 2 straight at the end there. But I do think Surge will take a map. I think they have potential to win this if they come out hot and Optic, I mean, maybe you can't beat a team 3 times in a row because it is tough to beat a team 3 or 4 times in a row. This will be the 3rd or 4th time in a row that Optic beat them this year. Um... So it is tough to beat a team that many times in a row. I can see a world where Seattle wins this, but it's very hard to pick Seattle against Optic considering Optic has had their number, uh, especially very recently they've had their number. So I'm going 3-1 Optic. And then moving into the final day, Sunday, um, some good matches on this day. That is a good day of matches. 
Um, the first one, even though you would think it's not that great, um, in the major, they played each other. Obviously, London still they didn't have Zap. They had Dylan instead, but they got up 2-0, and then Thieves reverse swept them. Um, this is another kind of match that I think is a toss-up, simply because we've seen Thieves. They look like a very good team, but we don't know if that was just Honeymoon and how well they're going to continue to play. And then London is in a Honeymoon. I know I've said that so much this game but or this video, but... There's so many teams that made roster changes, so there's so many honeymoon phases occurring. Uh, in London, you know, they just made that change. Uh, although I don't, I don't know. I still don't know if like Zap is like somebody. I mean, we've seen Zap in the pro league before. He's been a solid player, but he's not been a superstar. So I don't know if he's the guy to like put them over the edge um, or not. I think LA Thieves still wins this. I feel like I really want to go on like a map five in this one, um, and I want to go three two uh, to the LA Thieves because I don't know. I, I believe that London certainly is a very like competitive team i would say especially with zap in there i think they're going to be competitive in most series they're in um we saw them get reversed up by thieves they could have won that and i believe the roster got better so i can see a logic if you're picking london this i can see the logic behind it um my thing is though it's a question mark what london's roster is we don't know how zap's going to gel with the team we don't know how well they're going to play we've already seen la thieves play well with the current roster because both these are fairly new um and i honestly think kenny's going to dominate shawnee in the ar battle uh and then when you look at the subs You've got TJ and uh, and Venom on the subs. I believe that they outweigh Zed and Zap. Probably, I kind of like Zed and Zap as a duo name. It's kind of nice. I like those. They go well together. Um, but I don't know. I, I feel like the subs on LA Thieves are going to be able to beat out the subs on London. Uh, I think that Paul versus Draza flex battle is a very, very good one. Uh, I'm interested to see that because I think Paul could edge him out in that. But I just think the talent of Kenny is way higher than the talent of Shawnee. Uh, I think overall the players in LA Thieves are just better. So when it comes to a toss-up match, I'm going to go with the talent. And I think the talent's on the side of the LA Thieves. Then the second match of the day. This is where I think I might go bold for the for the weekend. And I think you know what that means. I mean, I feel like I've picked it pretty standard. I feel like most people are going to pick Empire over Legion, Ultra over Mutineers. Uh, Surge over Thieves, that one's kind of a toss-up. I feel like most people pick Optic over Ravens, probably Paris over Gorillas, probably Minnesota over Florida, probably Optic over Surge. Uh, the Thieves, Royal Ravens, kind of a toss-up. I think most people pick Thieves, though. And then I think in this match, most people are going to pick FaZe. Um, but I'm going to tell you something right now. Uh, I took French in high school. I took it for six years. I, I, I mean, I, I'll be honest, I don't really know the language very well, especially since I haven't done any of it in college. Um, I love France. I went there for two weeks. It's one of my favorite places on earth. Hydra's from France. I'm buying into all the Hydra hype. I've watched him. I think he is an incredible player. I mean, I'm not saying that he's going to instantly turn New York into the best team in the league. Um, but we saw FaZe look vulnerable. They struggled. I certainly think they're still the best team in the game. They're probably going to win this match. Um, this is kind of like what I did with that Paris versus Dallas match. They're probably going to win, but uh, I'm buying into the Hydra hype fully. I watched a little bit of him. The kid, I mean, even if they lose this match and he plays horrible, uh, it's the same thing like Shotzi. He played horrible against Huntsman in that first match in Modern Warfare, and he turned out to be the MVP. Even if Hydra gets nervous or whatever and just plays horrible in this first match, the kid has undeniable talent. He's going to be an awesome player in the league. Uh, and I think the honeymoon period for them is going to go crazy. I think Clay's got something to prove after kind of having a bad major. Uh, I think Asim is going to continue to play like the freak he is this year. Uh, I think Mac, as long as he's in the flex, I think he's more comfortable in the flex. I think he'll start to feel out the role better and start to play a little better, even though he wasn't playing that bad before. Uh, or if it's Diamond, he was already playing pretty well on the flex. I think he'll continue to do that. Uh, and I think Hydra's going to be a beast, and I think that Subliners are going to win it. And I'm going to go 3-2 because I want it to be a close match. I think I might go straight 3-2s because I think every match is a toss-up on this Sunday. And the reason I'm going 3-2 is because I think if it comes down to a Game 5, these are two teams that aren't great at search. Uh, I think that New York might not be as good at search even as they were before, uh, even though they weren't that good, because Hydra... I feel like there could be some communication issues there if he's not fluent in English. I also feel like a new team generally tends to struggle a little more in search. And then FaZe did not look good in search at all in the major. Um, so they're kind of struggling. So it could be kind of a sloppy Game 5 search. Uh, I'm a little more confident in the S&D game of subliners right now after seeing FaZe just really struggle in it. Um, Simp had like a 0.7 or a 0.8 or something in Stage 2 in search. That's got to be the first time ever over like a course of like a major or a stage or a regular season or anything that Simp hasn't had above like a 1.1 in search because the dude is a freak at search. That's not going to continue. I promise you, Simple turn it around. I mean, the dude's a beast in every game mode, but especially in Surge. He's he's just insane. He's going to tur uh, turn that around. I have no doubt about it. But I'm going to go with Subliners in this one, 3-2. Um, kind of like my bowl prediction pick for the weekend. I like to always do one, you know. Uh, and this is it. I certainly think it's not out of the question. They've played them how many times and haven't had their number. One of these times, they got to get them. One of these times, Subliners finally has to get them. And I'm going to say Hydra's going to come out firing in all cylinders and he's going to get them finally now I'll watch hydra's going to come on drop like a point five or something i'm gonna look like an idiot but i want to go with the bowl prediction so screw it oh and this last double points one is another 
freaking impossible one because i mean if it was anything if it was before the stage two major i'm picking empire every time over ultra but now that we've seen ultra win an event uh and beat the empire there it's kind of tough to to pick against uh ultra over them uh, and i think it could go three two again but i think this is going to be a three one series and i think it's going to be a three one either way but i'm going to go with ultra in it uh i really could see empire winning this i oh i want to switch it to empire so bad because i don't know i just feel i, I am going to switch it to empire i'm going to go three two two i'll, I'll stay three two just because i respect the ultra a lot um once again this is a complete toss-up match for me i very well could see the ultra winning at 3-0 i could see i could see this match literally going 3-0 either way 3-1 either way or 3-2 either way i have no idea what's going to happen here i just feel like ultra had a crazy run they went uh undefeated besides that first uh that first loss to phase they were beat everybody else in the major and then they beat phase later um i feel like they're a very good team but i feel like some people are overreacting and thinking like they could be the number one team i think they're definitely like a top six team probably top four for sure i had them at two in my last power ranking just because coming off winning the major it's hard not to put them right up there um i do think toronto's still going to be a top team for the rest of the year i think they're going to fight very hard uh, i think it's a little bit crazy to say that toronto is just all of a sudden like this team that we no doubt think is going to beat dallas because eh, i mean dallas is still a top four team they're still so good uh and they, their search looked a lot better um towards that stage two major like they looked a lot better in snd after like that last week of the regular season like when they played optic and stuff their search was so bad uh and it looked like they picked it up and at least learned something going into the major uh and stage two there so they looked a little better in that i think they'll be able to edge them out although i don't feel confident picking them in a five game series uh, or to win it in five because ultra search has looked so good and was so great in the major i feel like the way that the maps would have to shake off for the series uh empire has to win that map one hard point then i feel like ultra probably take the map to search uh, then I think Empire probably goes with the control, um, and then Toronto takes that second hard point, so it's 2-2, and then Dallas wins the map 5. Uh, if it goes to that situation, I also won't be shocked if Ultra wins at 3-2. Like I said, this is a toss-up match to me, but for some reason, I feel like Ultra has to lose at some point. They're on like a six-series win streak, uh, and Dallas versus Ultra is pretty much a toss-up. So I think I'm going to go with uh, old, reliable Dallas, because when we all seem to count them out is when they seem to play at their best. Uh, so there you go just a quick little peek there's all my predictions for the weekend uh overall i would say as the days went on like early on in the week i felt relatively confident about my picks then once we hit like the the sunday maybe like the middle of saturday like the second match of saturday i started to lose confidence in my picks um because there's just a lot of really tough ones but i believe that's going to do it um for this prediction video kept it under half an hour it looks like so that's kind of rare for us if you know i like to ramble um but yeah, I believe that's going to do it. I'm interested to see all these new rosters. Uh, we may have some teams going 0-2 or losing their matches that are about to be the best teams in the league because of the roster changes. You never know. Um, but yeah, I believe that's going to do it. I'm also excited to see how the uh, how the, the new patch changes if they play on the new patch. I think they would since it's at the start of the stage. They probably want to play on that. I'm interested to see how that changes things with the new movement. Uh, if some players are still used to slide canceling, that we'll see some players really struggle. I'm very interested to see what that does. Um yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be something crazy. I played a little bit. And it's weird. Like I'm so used to doing like the slide cancel where you hit A right after, or like I hit my paddle right after and I pop right up. You like slide cancel into a challenge, but like you can't do that if you like tried to slide and then hit A to like stand back up. You like are really delayed and you like can't shoot until you stand. It's like you're like it's like broken. Like you can't slide cancel like slide cancel stand up like slide child things like slide ahead of you or something so it's gonna be very interesting it's gonna be back to more traditional cod so that'll be very interesting to see but that is gonna do it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed the predictions as much as i enjoy giving them um be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe if you're new share this video with somebody comment down below your thoughts on the weekend what are your thoughts on some of the roster changes what are your thoughts on the new movement in the game and the patch um what are your thoughts on that stupid league play cancellation button? I heard they took it out, but my God, I played league play last night and that sucked because every single match we were winning, we were dominating last night and then it'd be like 220 to 100 in the hard point and the match would get canceled because somebody left. That sucked. Thank God they took that out right away. Um, but yeah, comment down below your thoughts on the weekend. Like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed. That is going to do it for this one. This has been Ryan with the CDL Podcast channel. Hope you guys had a great week. Hope you've been productive and I hope you enjoy watching the matches this upcoming weekend. I'll see you guys in the video following the weekend um, for my reactions and stuff. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, everyone.